What's up, y'all? I'm out here at the range, as you can see back behind me, on a hot, swampy day, but it's actually pretty fitting to check out an absolute firearm icon, the Harrington & Richardson Retro M16A1. <laughs> Some a few years more, but all our Americans who know what they're fighting for. Turn to live a full and measured life But till that day our boys must die And we'll keep sending more All right, y'all, that was a pile of fun, but I am war slap out after that little bit right there. I ain't even kidding you, man. It's so hot out here. It feels like a jungle out here, sure enough. But let's take a really quick look at this thing, and then we'll have a little more fun, hopefully, before this rain rolls in. I'm getting some dark clouds overhead. So like I said, what we're looking at here is the Harrington & Richardson Retro M16A1. I actually had no idea these things were even being made until I was just on their site one day, just nosing around, looking around. A uh, PSA site, that is. So what's happened? Apparently, the parent company of PSA bought out the rights to this from Harrington and Richardson uh, for their markings and all that jazz, and they actually bought out the uh, Nodak Spud dies. So this right here, from what little bit of research I've done so far, is one of the most correct clones that you can get right now, as far as the markings, all the parts on it. It's just very, very close to the original. Now, those of y'all who know already can see one thing that is not correct, and that's the black color of the upper and lower here you can get that in gray like the original ones were but i didn't want the gray one only because the couple that i've seen they didn't quite exactly match and they had like a bluish tint to it and i just didn't want to take a chance of that i figured the black was a really safe bet and i'm glad i went with that because it's really really nice looking not only that but when these things were sent back in their gray state to be rearmored, a lot of them were sent back in black anyway so that doesn't bother me one bit so like i said m16a1 obviously chambered in 556 by 45 this is one of the most iconic rifles in existence there's a long long history on this i'm not going to get all into that because it is very long but it is absolutely very very interesting so take a look at that if you're interested but this m16a1 is basically the successor to the m16 or the xm16 e1 i believe it was called one of them was for the air force the m16 without the uh forward assist and then the xm16 e1 did have a forward assist but those two were exactly the same this is like i say the successor to those now if my info is correct i believe this a1 version was manufactured from 67 to 82 and in 69 is when it became the official service rifle and now like i said these markings are correct harrington and richardson was one of only four manufacturers that officially made these for the u.s government it was h and r colt fn and i believe gm's hydromatic plant some plant of gm's i think are the four that officially made these for the u.s government 
government. Now, as far as operation, of course, you're looking at a basic AR-15 operation, direct impingement with your bolt carrier group, the gas system and all that the same. Now, arguably the most important change that was made on this A1 is the chrome lining of the bore. Your, your chrome line chamber, barrel and everything on this, you got a complete chrome lining. This is a 20 inch barrel and I actually did opt to get this in the original one in 12 twist. So you can get this in a one in seven twist, but I wanted the one in 12. Like I've got plenty of one in seven ARs. Uh, I wanted the originality of that one in 12. So definitely best used to stabilize 55 grain. That's what that one in 12 twist was for. It also has that original little pencil profile barrel. And up on the front, one thing that's different, it's got a split washer instead of a crush washer. And it's actually got the full bird cage. Whereas, you know, on the A2, they move to where you don't have any slots on the bottom. You got your A1 front sight and gas block with the uh, bayonet lug on it. Came with the sling swivels attached and they are rubber coated like the original is supposed to be. Also, I should probably mention that all the markings that are supposed to be on the barrel are there and the bolt carrier group. So all the markings are correct on it if you care about that. Obviously, you got that A1 triangle style handguard, which is just absolutely a vibe on this thing. I love that. And of course, speaking of vibe, if a carry handle don't give off a vibe, I don't know what does. This is one of the main reasons people absolutely love these retro style rifles like this. That carry handle is just absolutely iconic. Again, you got your M16A1 markings here, your fire control group with the safe semi and the wide open there. Flipping it around to the other side, you'll also notice no brass deflector. That didn't come in until the A2 and it has a forward assist with the teardrop style button on the back of it. Another change that was made with the A1 was the inclusion of all this ribbing here to keep you from accidentally dropping your mag. As far as the sights, I believe I already mentioned you got the A1 adjustable uh, for elevation post in the front and then on the back you've got a dual flip up aperture there with adjustable windage. The rest of your furniture as you can see you got an A1 style handle so no finger groove there and then an A1 stock and this one actually does not have the trap door because during this period where H&R was making these these did not have the trap door on the A1s. So all I've done with it so far is I picked up this sling. This is actually a USGI issued sling from the correct period and and then of course, as y'all saw in the little opening, if it makes it in through the editing, I also picked up a bayonet for it. All right, y'all, let's send some more rounds down range. I got everything I'm running today is 55 grain. It's gonna be X-Tac or uh, Winchester. Everything's 55 grain. So um, now I will say I didn't adjust this at all. I hadn't made any adjustments. I did make a few rounds down there at 25 yards just before I'd done that intro to see where I was at. And windage looks almost exactly right. Elevation, it looks like it was hitting about three inches low at 25. So I didn't touch that. I think I'm gonna leave that like it is for now. One other thing I wanted to mention too if y'all notice at the end of that little intro, if it made the cut, you're going to see a couple little hiccups there when I was running some fast rounds. That's totally nothing to do with this. It was some stuff that I changed for that little burst right there. And I didn't feel like changing all the rest of the stuff to tune it, if you know what I mean. So we back to, we back to OEM right here. But I'm just going to send a little group down here at uh, 25 yards. And I got a camera at 50 and 75 also. So show y'all what it's doing at 25 anyway. All right, I think those are right on the money right there. I actually covered it up with my post a little bit more than I did at the start. So let's go on out to 50. As you can see, that windage, I believe that windage is perfect. As long as I can hold it on target, that is. I mean, this thing's a laser beam, y'all. And with just iron sights, I mean, you can't complain about that right there. Let's go out to 75. Running out of room here on my table. I really should turn this bag, but we're going to go with it. Is that it? Notice I'm not getting the last round bolt hold open. I did on the first few mags that I run on that little intro, but for some reason I'm not getting a hold open anymore. I don't know what that's all about. All right, y'all, let's take us a boom, boom break. I'm gonna break the immersion here just for one round. I'm gonna use this P mag, just see if I get a uh, bolt lock open on this last round here. 
and I can probably, I can tell I probably already am, that bolt release was a little tight on that last mag too, and that was really nice and smooth, so it's probably that mag. See what we get, if we can get that boom boom from here, y'all. No problem at all. All right, y'all, I moved this on out to 100. I probably shouldn't have even went out there. I'm looking so good at 75, but I'm pretty confident that we're gonna do good at 100. Yeah, see, this is another one of these H&R mags, and even that mag stop is cr incredibly tough to push. See, without it, it's easy. So I don't know what's up with that. Something, something to do with these mags, I guess. Let's give it a good slap. I bet it's not gonna uh, hold back on the last round either. Something, something's funny with the mags for sure. Let's see if we can do it a hundred. Now I don't know where I'm impacting. Let me get my binoculars so I see where I'm impacting. All right, looks like I'm hitting up there at the very top, which actually makes sense because I was holding high up on the target. I figured I might need to hold a little high, but apparently not. Let me bring it down just a hair. I'm gonna hold about middle of the uh, silhouette out there. All right, let's see where I'm hitting now. I want to try for them rounds, but I want to see where I'm impacting first. All right, looks like I'm a little bit low out there now, so I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to try for that left side round down there. Now I was a little low. There we go. I knew I held low. Second guess myself. Let me try the right one. No, low again. Ah, I can't get that right one for some reason. Let's see. Hmm. There we go. I was actually holding high. I'm, I'm faking myself out. Let me go back to the silhouette. That gives me a little more room for error. Let's try one more on that right. Yeah, I got it now. There we go. Let's go back to the left. Back to the middle. Oh, that was it, wasn't it? Yeah, I didn't get no hold back. See, I'm not getting a hold back at all. It's not pushing a, it's not pushing my bolt hold back up far enough or something. Or it's or it's holding it, it's it's catching it. Something's a little weird with those mags. All right, let's pop us a few bottles, y'all. I was looking at these H&R mags, and I know exactly what's wrong with those things. This right here needs to be shaved down a little bit. My bolt uh, catch is dragging on this thing, and it's making it really tough to move. So I'm going to try one of these ASC mags to see if they lock back. See, that was a little smoother right there. It was still a little bit tough. These metal mags just need a little bit of fitting, it seems like. Let's see what we get here on these three bottles. These bottles are going to disintegrate, I'm pretty sure. Well, not what I thought. It's moving so fast, it just zipped right on through, I guess. Sure enough, them things just zip right on through now. They left a pretty good hole on the back side, but I got us one spiced up here. Let's see if I can if I can hold over just enough. This is gonna be tricky, y'all. Let's see if I can get lucky. That's more like it. I think I'll empty the rest of these at 25 to see if this ASC mag holds open. Is that what it is? ASC? Yeah, ASC. About 50-50 on this one holding open. It feels a little funny too. We did get a hold open on that one, so it's just these H&R mags, and like I said, I know what it is. It needs a little shaving right there. All right, y'all, let's send us one last rumble through this jungle.
That's what I'm talking about right there. All right, y'all, I'm wrapping it up right there for what was an awesome time out here with this H&R M16A1. I had an absolute blast out here with this thing. That intro was a ton of fun. Hopefully I can get it edited up good enough where it looks as fun as it was. Perfect performance out here from this thing. The only thing I had happen was those mags and that's got nothing to do with this. So I'll fix that up. Like I said, it's just a little file and that mag pull y'all saw, saw run absolutely fine. As far as the accuracy, this thing is incredibly impressive. I can tell you right now, this thing could be an absolute laser beam in the right hands. Even me out here off a little Little old squishy bag and a wobbly table i mean it was putting them right on top of each other out to 75 yards even and once i figured out my hold at 100 i can tell you right now i could empty a full mag at 100 and hit every single time not to mention once again the total vibe that this thing has i don't know about y'all but i absolutely love this retro stuff the carry handle look the triangle handguard i mean it's a total total vibe every time i take a glance at this thing ccr starts blaring in my head now the one thing i will say that i I might end up changing is the furniture itself but i would use the exact same furniture just get some actual usgi stuff it's very very expensive but i love the worn in look i was hoping that this would get a little more worn in out here today but it's really not i actually grabbed a set of triangle original colt hand guards uh, that have the worn look that i want but honestly they feel really thin like these they feel just really thin and flimsy i mean is that just standard i've never felt the usgi one so those y'all out there who have are the usgi ones more substantial like just beefier and thicker feeling or are they all just kind of thin and flimsy feeling like this but let me know what y'all think about this old retro beauty is this something that some of y'all out there are into like i am or do you really not care for the retro stuff let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are if you did enjoy the video reach down and hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and make sure you've got your notifications turned on so you don't miss any good stuff when i upload it if you're doing some shopping check out those affiliate links in the video description Description. anything you buy after going through any of those links down there i get a kickback from them towards the channel so i really appreciate that like i said i had an absolute blast out here today tons of really good stuff on the way be on the lookout for that and in the meantime stay safe stay prepared and i'll see y'all soon